the opening blessing. Blessed is the kingdom of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Notice how the liturgy begins with doxology, with glory. We bless and thank God for the gift and the beauty of the heavenly kingdom of the Holy Trinity. We don't begin by speaking about our sin. We begin by looking up to heaven and blessing God for his glory. The theme of the kingdom is very important in the New Testament. Christ's public ministry begins with the words, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. The last question that the disciples put to Christ before his ascension is, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom to Israel? And between the opening and the ending of the gospel, there are innumerable parables of the kingdom. So also in the divine liturgy, the kingdom is very important. Blessed is the kingdom. At the great entrance, may the Lord God remember you in his kingdom. In the Lord's prayer we say, thy kingdom come. Do we think sufficiently, you and I, about the kingdom, about the kingly rule of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit? The liturgy then is the feast of the kingdom. And that means it is an entry into the age to come. It's the inauguration of the last things, because the kingdom belongs to the age to come though it is also present and active here on earth. Now let's move on to two key moments during the liturgy. The two entrances, the little entrance with the gospel book and the great entrance with the bread and wine. Now it is very significant that at both of these moments we call to mind the participation of the angelic hosts in our worship. At the little entrance, when the priest stands with the gospel book, he says a prayer that, alas, is usually not said aloud, not heard by the people. A prayer which speaks of the ranks and hosts of angels and archangels who are performing the liturgy in heaven. And he says to God, make with our entry an entry of your holy angels celebrating the liturgy with us. So here, at this important moment in the service, the entry with the Gospel book, we think of the fact that the angels are praying with us, that as we, the celebrants, enter the sanctuary, the angels are entering also. On one occasion, the Russians and Seraphim of Sarov saw the entry of the angels with his bodily eyes. It was Holy Thursday, he was serving as deacon, and at the moment of the little entrance, he saw Christ accompanied by the angels, like a swarm of bees, he said. He saw Christ come in through the west door and move up through the center of the church and then entering, Christ entered into the icon in the icon screen in which he was depicted. 
What St. Seraphim saw then in a miraculous way, visibly through his eyes, happens every time we celebrate the liturgy, though it happens invisibly but with no less reality. Make with our entry an entry of your holy angels. So think of the presence of the angels at that key moment in the liturgy. Then we call to mind the angels later on at the second procession, the great entrance. This renders the unity of earth and heaven even more explicit. In the hymn of the Cherubim, the Cheruvicon, we say, Ita Cheruvim Mysticos Iconizontes. We who mystically represent the Cherubim. Actually, I think that is a rather weak translation because the word represent is a flabby and dry word. What it actually says in the Greek is, we who mystically are icons of the cherubim. Now an icon is more than a bare copy or exterior imitation. The icon implies participation. Through the icon, the person depicted, Christ, the mother of God, or the saints, or the angels, is made present to us. Through the icon, we meet the person depicted. We enter into the mystery that is being shown in the icon. The icon is a point of meeting, a place of encounter, not just a piece of decoration. So, if the earthly worshippers are called icons of the cherubim, this means that they share directly in what the cherubim are doing in heaven. A single action. The same point is made in a more emphatic manner by the hymn at the great entrance in the liturgy of St. James. Let all mortal flesh be silent, which we sing on Holy Saturday. Here the processional entry of the clergy is identified with the entry of Christ himself accompanied by the angels. The hymn includes this phrase, the King of Kings, Christ our God, comes forth to be sacrificed and given as food to the faithful. Before him go the choirs of angels with every principality and power, the cherubim with many eyes and the six-winged seraphim. Clearest of all is the entrance hymn sung at the liturgy of the pre-sanctified gifts during Great Lent. Now the powers of heaven worship with us invisibly.